Hello, my name is Ka, a third year medical student. In this video today, I'm going to talk about GVP, jungler venous pressure. Have you ever noticed that someone's next veins popping out while they're singing or screaming? That veins are jungler veins. So when the pressure inside your chest increases, jugular vein distension occurs and appears at a bulge running out to the right side of your neck and more visible that you can see. And to know more about its mechanisms, let's move to the first one, anatomy of jugular veins. From the right atrium, superior vena cava divides into two brachiocephalic veins. Each of these brachiocephalic veins divides into subclavicle and internal jugular vein. An external jugular vein is a branch of subclavicle vein. The anatomic relationships of the right internal and external jungler veins to the right atrium are important to an understanding of the clinical evaluation of the venous pulse. The right internal jungler vein communicates directly with the right atrium via superior vena cava, but the external jungler veins are more superficial and therefore more visible but are more likely to kink. And also the left internal jungler vein which comes to the other side and not a good representation of the column the, of the blood. So it's better to go up with the right side, right internal jungler vein. Okay, so let's move to the physiology. Um, normally sternal angle is approximately 5 centimeters above the center of the right atrium. With a patient reclining at 45 degrees, the head tilted away to the left. If you see position, and then you get a ruler and come off from that point of measurement, and then you measure the height of pose vertically to the sternal angle. For example, um, like 2 centimeters above sternal angle. Then we just need to add 5 centimeters of water, and it will give you the right atrial pressure of 7 centimeters of water. So if the pose is greater than 3 or 4 centimeters, then it will be considered to be an elevated GVP. Let's move on to the normal GVP waveforms. Normally GVP has three peaks and two descents. Three peaks are A, C, and V represent to the increasing of the right atrial pressure. And two descents, X and Y, represent to decreasing of the right atrial pressure. And I can show you the easy way to remember all of these with the letters marked in red. A is short for atrial contraction. C is short for contraction of the right ventricle. X is short for relaxation of atrial. V is short for venous return. And Y is short for passive emptying of atrium. Okay, for more details of each wave, we're gonna take a look at a picture of correlation of GVP and ECG while watching me drawing. The first one is A wave. The A is short for atrial contraction. So after the polarization, the atrium start to contract and force 30% of the amount of blood to the ventricle through the tricuspid valve. And it's also called a pressure transmitted backs up to um, the SVC, superior vena cava and jungler veins. So it will make the GVP increase and we get the A wave. And the second is C wave. C is short for contraction of the ventricle after QRS complex, I mean the polarization of the ventricle. So the right ventricle star isometric contraction. The ventricle completely closed because tricuspid valve and monary valve um, are closed and it increased the pressure inside the right ventricle and also called the pressure transmitted back backs up to the right atrium and is make the tricuspid valve bulging, tricuspid valve bulging. And it also backs up to the jungler veins, uh, so we get the C wave. So the third is X descent. X descent refers to relaxation of atrial. At this time, the right ventricle is in isotonic contraction. It causes, it decreases the pressure inside the right ventricle is uh, pull down the um, tricuspid valve to the apex and it will drop the pressure in the right atrium and also in the jungler vein so we have the X descent. The next one is V wave. V is short for venous return. 
So let's imagine that blood from your upper body, your head, your upper limbs is like um, rainy water, and lower body is underground water. So all rainy water and underground water is go inside the right atrium. So the atrial pressure will be increased, and it'll make a transmitted back, uh, a transmitted pressure backs up to the jugular vein, and so we have the V wave. And final, this is the Y descent wave. So Y is short for amputation of atrium. So after venous return, the atrial pressure is strong enough to open the tricuspid valve and is forth 30% the amount of blood to the right ventricle and causes a drop of the atrial pressure. And the jugular pressure is degree two. So we get uh, the Y descent wave. And remember that A wave starts before S1 at the end of diastole, and V wave starts after S2 at the end of systole. Okay, so I think this video is too long. So in the next video, part two, I'm going to continue to talk about abnormal GBB waveforms. Thank you for listening.